She said it's your child. And it really messed me up. How can you deny? Your own flesh and blood Gotta face reality There can never be any more us The woman eyes hurt me Yes, yeah, so precious Jesus said it's your child And it really messed me up how can you deny your own flesh and blood? Okay, you guys, it's a day. It's a day. Hello, friends. I know I look rough today. <laughs> I know I look rough. It's been rough. Like, I just had no energy today. <laughs> none but i did give me a canvas i got me a big ass canvas two pack uh it's cold as fuck right now <laughs> bought me some some got me some paint and some paint brushes and things like that because i want to do some paint sessions um and then tomorrow i'm going to a cool little event um a music making event it's like a music maker mixer um for the music makers okay and creative spaces and things like that so it's really cool right that's what i want to do and so it's so funny that these last three years i have been trying my hardest to leave los angeles california right and i've just been trying so hard to leave la and everybody like god has been sending so many people to let me know like you don't need to leave LA. <laughs> you don't need to leave LA. You need to be staying in LA. And I'm like so gung ho on leaving LA. And every time I leave, um, there's something that brings me right back. And this is, has been something since I was 18. Because even when I left for ASU, I came right the fuck back, right? Like you're going to come back home. Like it's something about Los Angeles that that is so special it's something about california that is just so special especially like it's god's favorite place because god doesn't have any of the chaotic weathers in cali the way it has in any other place especially in la like la we don't get as crazy weather like the way other because even like san francisco and them be having crazy weather or so whatever but anyway <laughs> so i have been wanting to stay in la and which is good because now i could really like there's been some like i told y'all before that there's some new like groups and things like that that has been popping up in la that I, in spaces and things like that that i want to be a part of and now i'm closed now i have um accessibility right i, I have transportation and all of those things that i could partake um this is just get my energy up i mean this week this week has just been mad crazy and i have to remind myself to rest because i'll be trying to push myself and I gotta rest. But anyways, <laughs> look what I got. Look what I got. <laughs> this is for us, right? All the niggas in the whole wide world. So anyways, tarot, this is a pregnancy tarot deck, okay? <laughs> of course, of course I'm gonna have a pregnancy tarot deck. <laughs> And this is just, and they had Oracle cards, but the Oracle cards doesn't come to May, y'all. And I'm like, my baby gonna be here the next month. Why would I? Two months, what May, June, July. Anyway, this is the Secrets of the Ancestors Oracle. Listen, I opened this deck and I saw Boo Boo the Fool. As soon as I saw Boo Boo the Fool as a card, I said, yep. I said, yep. This the one, right? Yep. And so I wanted to talk about this pregnancy for a second, right? So when I just shuffled the deck for this Oracle deck, it was this card. Look at the beautiful artwork. Now, mind y'all, this is the lady who, this is the black girl who did the Oracle deck, the African goddess one. We had that. I did pull some cards on the African goddess deck back in 2020. Not 2020. <laughs> not 2020. 2022. 2022. And then in this one, this card came out, right? this two of cups 
and I've been thinking about myself, right? And so there's been uh, there's been readings around like love is in the air, this two of cups energy, and yada yada yada. And I realized like what I realized was that for me, so this card talks about sorry, this card talks about like the two of cups is about nurturing and building your, your relationship with people, and it doesn't have to be romantic, right? And so usually when they have to see the two of cups, I automatically assume it's romance. Um, I'm always thinking it's a romantic card, right? But in reality, like my skin is glowing and I have not washed my face yet. I have not washed my ass. I <laughs> this shit. Like I'm going to go shower now. After this video. But getting back into it. Um... What I've noticed is that the baby, like as soon as I came back, the baby has me feeling closer to my grandma, feeling closer to my aunt, feeling closer to my mom, right? And being more receptive and being open to listening to them. And I think that just from, I feel like the week before, like two weeks ago, our relationship two weeks ago and our relationship now, it's a total different shift, right? It's a total, totally different shift of energy. And I think we all kind of had this energy of this chip over our shoulder. And now in this energy, it's been very soft. It's been very like, you know, and I think that with the baby, the baby, so the, everybody's been saying the baby is a gift, right? It's a gift from God. And I think the ultimate gift that God had came with the baby was this nurturance for me. Um, to where everyone is like, okay, are you okay? How you doing? You know what I mean? How you feeling? And our grandma's always like, like how you feeling? Did you eat? Did you da 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 right? And so it's like, finally you get that, that <laughs> right? When you experience emotional neglect as a kid, now you're like, oh, <laughs> finally, like finally people are like concerned about me, <laughs> right? They're concerned about my well being. Especially when we're usually the ones who are like that, especially like Virgos, right? We could be very service oriented and making sure you're okay and checking on you and things like that. So to receive it and be on the other hand, like I'm like, I can get used to this. Like this, all it took was a baby. <laughs> all it took was me to have a baby. But I love it and I I'm noticing and I'm watching myself be so much more expansive and open and loving and nice and kinder and i just been just been meeting and surrounding myself with black women okay black older women and you know i just i just love us i love black women i love us like i just think that we're amazing i think that we're cool and i think that we're just so sweet and this black lady today she said you know it's time for us black folks to be on top. She was like, it's time for us to be on top. And I have been feeling that too. I'm like, it's time for us to be on top. Like, I'm ready to see us with the riches and glory because it don't make no sense how this American society, this American country has been built on the backs and the tears of our ancestors. And everybody come here from every country thriving, but us, especially in particular African-Americans. We, we're the only ones who are still way behind, way below, you know, when it comes to the American society and only time we are able to excel is if we're selling our pussy, we're stripping, we're naked, we're making, we're being exploited by um, executives and, and higher ups in the music industries and the entertainment industry all together, right? But it's just like, I don't know, I'm just softening up and I've been thinking about, do I want to go back to church? Do I want to go back and, and go into that community, right? Um, I, I've been receptive to wanting to make amends with my great aunt, right? Like, I want to, like, because I've been thinking about this anyways. Like, I've been wanting to, like, get her some flowers and get her some stuff just because I didn't like how I went about leaving their house earlier this year. And so, and I was very, like, you know, and I just realized, like, the root chakra was our ego death, right? It was really us getting to know our ego, really getting to see 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 it in its fullness, allowing it to be its most uninhibited itself, right? And so for these last three years, I we've seen hi, we've seen different um, you know, just the way that I just acting in our eyes, right? caused a lot of unnecessary things made situations worse than it needed to be and now coming into this energy and this shift and growing up and maturing as i'm preparing for my my baby 
right? Um, just just being like, you know what? No, I was wrong in that situation. No, I was this, that. And, or just being not even caring if, not even caring whether I was wrong or right. Like, I could be, I could have been in the right the whole time and still feeling like, you know what? I'll be the bigger person. I'll be the bigger person. Like, I don't even care anymore. Like, sure, I'll be there. And my own son, she was like, you know, you're going to be receiving a lot of unsolicited advice. You're going to be receiving a lot of stuff from people. Like, a lot of people are going to be telling you, giving you tips and telling you how to raise your baby, how to how to take care of your baby, and things like that. And she was like, people really mean well. Most, she was like, most people really mean well, and they're really just caring about you and the kid and she said be nice when it comes to your responses with them <laughs> right she was like be nice when it comes to your responses with them because you 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 don't know people how you don't want to mess up your blessing you don't know how people are going to want to bless you or your kid you don't know how people are going to fall in love with your kid and they might see things and pick things up and be like oh i'm gonna get this for ebony's baby you never know so just be careful with that be mindful and she's like and i really think it's very important that you go back to family I think that you should be around your family and things like that, right? And we had this card in April about family and how we should be around family, right? And even early in, I think it was like January, I was talking to Big Pimpin and um, and he was saying that um, that I needed to be around family. He's like, you, what you want to do is always stay around family. Even if y'all don't talk every day, you ain't got to be da 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 but it's better to know like, hey, they around the block if I do need them, right? And so I've been thinking also about my daughter's god mom and who I want her, who I want to be the god parents. And you know what? I had said something so asinine a couple of months ago. And really, I was just being problematically funny. <laughs> <laughs> but in the in the most non funny way, right? But I was thinking, I was like, damn, do would I feel comfortable with my gay cousins taking care of my baby, like watching my baby? And now I'm thinking, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm about to get my little cousin, his little gay ass, and his little gay family, his gay, uh, his his gay boyfriend. Um, you know, they could they could babysit. Y'all want to babysit? Y'all want to take the kid? Take her. <laughs> Same with my other cousin. I'm like, you know what? I let her. I actually want her to be. I actually want the funny. I, the irony of it all is that the stud is the best candidate, the best person I think to be the 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 godmother. Like I want my my stud cousin to be my to be my child's godmother. And just from my conversations with her, even when it came to like religion and religious beliefs and different things like that, she's to me it was the perfect one that I wanted. That I wanted. Um, right and she you know and things like that so just getting back into it <laughs> right getting into things um But my aunt is the one who's really pushing for me to be around family even more and more. But yeah, so just thinking about this two of cups, right? And even this one is like, she talks about, yeah, this one talks about how like the, the, the pregnant woman isn't showing yet. However, things are changing around and things are maneuvering. So I'm not, it's not shown, like I'm not showing yet. I'm still the very early cru crucial stages of pregnancy. However, it's like I'm preparing in maturity, preparing for the child in all the ways, like their community and things like that. And it's like, yeah, I need to be home. Like, I don't want to be, I don't, it's funny because I always wanted to live, go back to living on my, I lived on my own for three years, right? I wanted to go back to living on my own. But then I remember when I was living on my own, I was like, I want my family in, in the house. Like, I want my husband and my kids. Like, I don't want to live alone, alone. <laughs> but I want to live on my own space. But with having my kid, I'm like, hell yeah, we finna be, I want to be in a house full of folks. Like, we need to be in a house full of folks. So it feels better. Cause I was just thinking like me, 
by myself with my kid is different than me with everybody else. And so my aunt was like, I don't understand why you keep getting, you have this thing in your head that you alone and you don't have nobody and no support and that you, you gotta do everything yourself. She was like, you really gotta let go of that pride. I don't understand why, you, how you got that in your head. People are here, people wanna help you. And she, and I was, and she was like, and I don't know why you keep leaving. I was like, I, I feel like I was averted. Like, I feel like I had just sprung myself onto you. So I was just like, is she going to kick me out? Cause I just felt guilty for, for invading your space like that. And she was like, stop feeling like that. She was like, it's a blessing that you're here. She was like, I would never kick you out. She was like, why do you keep having all these things in your head? <laughs> And so, and that has been my, my main paranoia with running from here. I'll be like, oh, she about to kick me out. Like, let me get prepared. Let me, and blah, blah, blah. And, and just understanding that just family has your back. And even my aunt, my great aunt told me that, like, you need to stop, you know, thinking you do everything on your own. That's your problem. You know, they always like, that's your problem. <laughs> And so for me, my ego is that pride is that I'm going to do it myself. I, I'm a strong black woman. I don't need nobody, right? And so breaking out of that and with this child, I'm like, shh, bitch, I need any, any and everybody sick. All hands on dick, like, okay? Um, but I'm just really excited about our tarot cards. But I was talking to this lady, this older black lady today. She's 70 years old. I was, I, and I saw me, okay, through this lady, I saw me. She had one kid, and she living life. She don't have no, right? It's 7 p.m. Friday. It's 95 degrees. She ain't got no nigga, and no nigga ain't got her, right? She about to shake that ass, right? She was trying to turn. She was like, she was like, I was like, get it. We was in Ross Cut. It was three of us, right? It was four of us, my cook, including my auntie. So the lady was in front. It was in front. With her basket, it was us, and it was another black lady behind us. And the three, and we all, the four of us was just talking like we just, like we know each other. We just cracking up. And the Hispanic folks was looking at us like, because we in the middle. We sandwiched. Everybody else in front and back, they Hispanic. But we were just laughing, just cracking up. And lady like, I got my weed. I got my drink. She talked about pouring libations and shit. I was like, that's going to be me. A wild ass 70. I'm going to be a wild ass mama. And it's not a wild mama like I'm in the streets. I'm hoeing or I'm in the clubs. No. I'm a wild ass mama. My child is like. <laughs> my child is going to be like my mama. My child is going to be all subdued and I'm, I'm the ratcheteer. I smoke weed and I'm like, bitch, I'm about to have me a blend. <laughs> Finna have me a blend, okay? Mm -hmm. I'ma try cocaine in the 80s. When I'm in <laughs> when I'm 80 years old, I'll try a little cocaine. Okay? If I make it to 95, I might try a little her. Little her. You know, no, I ain't gonna go that extreme. <laughs> You know, <laughs> can you imagine being 95 just like with the belt and oh, God's willing, right? <laughs> but it's cool, it's great or whatever, it's fun or whatever. But I'm really excited. So I'm going to pull an oracle cord for us, an oracle cord. I've been eating eggs, y'all. You know, I love me some eggs. I need to get me some avocado. I want some avocado with my eggs and then I need to get me some yogurt and things so much. The matriarch is at the bottom. Nurture the harvest. And then me and my grandma came up with my baby name. I already told her the first to the last name. And so she was that was like, what's the middle name? I was like, I don't know. And then my grandma gave, gave her her middle. And the patriarch. Oh. That's why I came on this rant. I have a lot to talk. Oh, and the shaman. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm not gonna look at no more cards. <laughs> I'm not gonna look at no more. Look, the trickster, ego and excess. I love that. Um, so, um, what was I about to say? She said it's your job. <laughs> um, 
get it into it. You I don't care. You don't belong. You big as shit too. <laughs> I don't know where the other one. My auntie was like, she died. And I was like, she did, but she didn't die. That's another one. I was like, oh, that's a different one. That was that other white one that had died. It hit, and it, it's flattened now. So I don't know where my little little one is. She ain't been leaning around here, so. And then she found her a new home. But she better come back because the baby needs her. <laughs> the baby needs her, too. Like, kitty, come in. The baby needs her. I'm little. Y'all want to eat? I got to go find her. The rest of y'all want to eat? You want to eat you some cat food? You got to go find her. You know you know where she at and bring her here. And when she come, the rest of y'all can eat. But he listening because his ear's moving. As soon as I started talking, his ear moved. <laughs> Why did I try to make my ear move? <laughs> but anyways... Um, so yeah, just talking to that lady and her just being very happy. She's talking about how she has a scrapbook. Her and her homegirls, they got a group and they do scrapbooking. And she's like, that's our therapy. She's like, you know, when we go through stuff, we come and we talk it out and we and we scrap and we put it all into the art. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what this YouTube channel has been about. It's just me trying, finding alternative ways for you and your therapy, right? Instead of, she was like, we don't want to go talking to no white lady. And well, I think that, that, that your body has got me feeling sick again and I'm, I'm about to throw up she was like we don't want to hear no white lady um and then I'm trying to give us a pill <laughs> and that's what I've been trying to tell y'all stop trying to go to them folks getting pills <laughs> it ain't nothing you don't need to be medicating nothing away talk it out creatively and that's what we're here for. And that's what the sacral chakra is for. For you to go through your emotions, your traumas, your shit, but in a creative way. And so I bought some canvases because we're going to get into it. Okay? We're getting into it. So anyways, um, sorry. Let the, the nausea go back down my throat. Uh. Okay, there we go, burp. Okay, so the facial expressions help with the burps. Okay. Um what was I saying? You got my mouth watering, she fine as fuck. Let me show you what you came to do. <laughs> this is how I want to dance now. Like, I just want to shimmy. I just want to shake my boobs. They sore right now, so they can't. But shake my shoulders. Like, I want to go into a dance. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I got to get on beat. <laughs> Little hollow <Harlem> shake. <laughs> Instead of twerking. I don't want to twerk no more. Like, my back hurt. I don't want to twerk. I want to shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> what was we talking about before we get to these cops so anyway so lady yeah so she had a group and they did the scrapbooking and things like that and i just thought about how how empowerful how powerful how loving how embracing it is to have a black female group right a black female friend group and i'm blessed that you know I'm a mom now, and so I get to finally have mom friends. That has been the goal. I be seeing bitches, and I be like, ooh, I want us to be friends so bad, but I don't have a kid. <laughs> I don't have a kid, and I want to do go go with you, with my kid and your kid, and we go eat some lunch, or we go here and there and there and here and there and there. I want us to go with our kids. <laughs> Let's go. And so... Being able to have mom friends is something very important for me. And it's something that I, I, I really love, right? Like, especially if, like, I go with my cousin and we go with her kids, my kids, right? Um, if she's, you know, cool. Um, however, getting back into it, right? Putting it back on it, reverting back. Um, what was I about to say? female friend groups and so we talk about 
So, you know, we have, so even I have talked about this, this narrative and things like that about the toxicity of female friend groups and, and you got to watch these bitches and these bitches ain't your friend and all of the things, right? And that, that, that rhetoric and that, and that, those messages are constantly being repeated. They're, they're blasted all over social media, right? We see way more friend traumas now than we see friend good things friends friend groups and, and kindness and, and group and things and like that right and i'm like i really want me a black friend group a black female friend group where we really do shit like i want to find the friends that that like to do the things that i like to do so the scrapbooking and they was like they go to scrapbooking conventions i said for real she was like yeah she was like you'll find it she was like go to michael's take you a michael's class for scrapbooking things like that i'm like i'm gonna do that Honey, watch I have me friends with some like seven year old white women. <laughs> My friend was gonna have like seven year old white women, <laughs> eight year old black women. <laughs> My young ass. But I was like, that's what I love, and that's what I will, I will want. I would, I will love that, right? Um, just friends that want to do yoga with me, go gardening with me, go do things like that. You know, I would love that. I, I just want, I want homey friends. I want friends of the home, like. We, we be at somebody's house cooking dinner together. And that's the activity. That's the hangout. It's just being there cooking dinner, right? Like eating, making us a good potluck meal and the kids just run around rugged, right? That's the thing, that kinship, that friendship. Um, to me, it would just be amazing and beautiful. Um, with no none of that jealousy it's just you're my sister i'm here to take care of you whatever you need you're an extension of my family <laughs> right like you're an extension of my family whatever you need i got that's how i always been with my friends even if it wasn't reciprocated but it's like you can't hold on to that baggage of, of that don't hold on to the baggage of old friends and how they were and the fake friends or even if people weren't necessarily fake friends it was just that y'all Y'all just wasn't vibing at the time correctly, right? Um, but it's just growing pains. You you live and you learn. But I would love that in my in my next phase of my life is for my kids to see me in social a lot of social groups and, and a lot of social connecting and things like that. So they have a plethora of people around that they could just go and connect with. And it's not just me. They have their village, right? And so yes i would love that um and so we're getting back into it and i was thinking about dr umar right so i've been watching some of dr umar oh yesterday i was watching some dr umar clips every blue moon i just sit and i just watch dr umar clips and i just start laughing it is good it's a good comedic relief it's good for comedy like you just watch your pan-africanism and it's just some real shit but it's just hilarious right like unintentionally hilarious like we all just think he is so fucking funny right <laughs> so fucking funny and he be dead ass okay dead the fuck ass and i was thinking about him and i'm like you know it's cool it's great that we hear him talks about the the beauty and the power of black couples and black love and and the significance of that right but i think now more than ever in this era i'm waiting to see him in his black love teach these boys how to love a black queen do he even know how to yes it's one thing to be with one it's another thing to love her properly to love her endearly, to love her to the depths of you, right? Show those young boys, not only should you not be with Becky, you know, the, the seven year old, she was like, my son, he, he, he with a Becky. And I said, you better watch that bitch. <laughs> I said, okay. And we always like, uh, <laughs> we ain't shit. We always like, ah. Uh. <laughs> She was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> she was like, I told her, watch that bitch, okay? Watch that bitch. <laughs> I was like, I know that's right. I know that's right. He was, she was like, but that ain't my business. I don't give a fuck because <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> I don't know that's right. But it's really important. The matriarch and the patriarch, right? It's really important. Like, his message would be exemplified even more. It would be taken serious even more if he was 
in a committed marriage with a beautiful queen and loving her to no end and loving her so boldly and loudly. Because after a while, it's like, all right, Dr. Umar, you've been saying this shit over and over again, but what are you doing? Sorry. What are you doing? Right? What are you niggas doing? Because a lot of y'all are rich. A lot of y'all got affluence, but none of y'all aren't y'all so quick to vocalize being players y'all so quick to vocalize you know being the top spender in dates and shit like that but how how have you loved a, a black woman not control her not tell her what i say goes but how have you loved her valued her and value her opinion and contribution to your marriage the matriarch and the patriarch nurture the harvest and unapologetic you have to unapologetically nurture the harvest you have to unapologetically love the village unapologetically love your wife and your family i'm done with y'all look trust the path i'm done with you niggas being players i'm tired of seeing niggas talk about being players and things like that i love love i love the niggas who love their wife and really love their wife really love their wife and really really tend and, and take to her because it's, it's a shame that i'm only seeing black women being loved and, and loudly and boldly and it's only it's by a white man or a lesbian shit <laughs> fucking lesbian you know what i mean Every time we see a black woman having some real romance, a nine times out of ten, it's a lesbian, and we like, oh, because it, it it don't it, it flutters our heart. We're like, a man did that just for her. That's love. We need that content now. We have seen the content constantly, constantly, constantly of y'all abusing, mistreating, d degrading us, and all the things. You niggas and let the hoes take over. Y'all done made them my Angela. <coughs> These niggas up, up raise, they help out, they support, they uplift. They put in the spotlight. These hoish women who are talking doggish about black men. They're not helping. But then y'all want to talk about black excellency, black representation, black business. Help the youth. How are you helping the youth if you keep promoting? You're sponsoring. You're, you're being the investor. You're the rich man. You're the rich black guy. But you're investing in the stripper. You didn't go invest in, in the girl struggling. Because you should know how she looked. She looking like me. Rough. But she didn't study all day. She need help with her fucking tuition. She working two jobs. She working at McDonald's too. But you ain't throwing a stack on her and saving her life. You throwing a stack on some lazy bitch who just want to shake her ass and suck dick. And barely half the ass want to do that. And still want to come and be on the microphone saying niggas ain't shit. And y'all making them the voice of us as black women. And then we see y'all uplift and praise them. And we see them like, damn, these bitches really is winning. That we start getting, you we start wanting to change ourselves. And so now I'm starting to see the, the good girls poking the thing out. Y'all saw me. I felt so rejected. I was like, well, maybe I need to be wow. Because he does it. I was like, this man is in love with a girl who is a full-blown hoe. A full blown hoe, and he is madly in love with this girl. Maybe I'm doing things wrong because that seems to be the pattern. <laughs> that seems to be the pattern, and then we start getting into we like okay, and we also are seeing these girls being having the 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 success that we worked so hard in school to attain. They got the nice, they drive a nice car. She has a nice home. She has this, she has that. So in our heads, we start thinking, oh, that's how you have to be to attract that shit, to get that shit. Because 
obviously nice girls don't win. And now we pressure ourselves to do something that we, this whole year I have been trying to convince myself to shake ass naked in front of a whole bunch of people. For the last three years, for the last, even before, for the last five years, I have been trying to convince myself to strip, to show my pussy, to suck dick, to have an OnlyFans, to be a sex worker, right? I was even starting to try to convince y'all, <laughs> right? And I had to bring it back in. And the reason why I started to get hung on to that thing, to those things, was it was because the rhetoric that is, we are only deserving of love if we look like we have money as women. Can you imagine them saying the same thing to me? <laughs> You're only deserving of love when you, you know, they've been talking about this whole Tia Mori and her husband, Corey Hard, wasn't they Hadrick, Hardrick, or whatever? And how we are all like, all, we are all so annoyed with Tia. And mind you, Tamir had always been my favorite sister, sister. I just want to keep that in mind. So, uh, Tamira is my favorite sister, sister. Okay? The black community have disowned Tamira just because she's been with that white man. I understand. But 